Okay. So you open up sample character, and a uh, quick overview of the file on layer one, we've got this little dude, which we will get to. On layer two, we have this rather enormous cube. Um, well, it was a cube until I kept extruding it. If I hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see the f structure of it. Uh, it is divided into four equal parts, and then there's a couple of control edge loops um, at each division, and that is for a smoother deformation. Um, generally, when you're modeling characters, you want to have some edge loops on both sides of the joints to help your deformations be smoother and just generally uh, better. So we're going to rig this. Um, you know, I know most of you are doing your animation projects with pre-made rigs, and that's a good thing because I don't want you to obsess too much about rigging because it gets it can get complicated. Um, if you're if you're starting with a simple character, then rigging isn't too terribly difficult. The more complicated your character, the more complicated the rigging process. But I want to give you an overview of how this works. So uh, the way that we're going to do that uh, is I'm going to go into object mode and front view. I've got my cursor centered. If it isn't, you can hit shift C and it will center. Uh, I'm going to hit shift A, add in a armature single bone. So this is a bone. This is the kind of primary unit of armatures and rigging. Um, think of these just like you would think of a bone in your own skeleton. It's your The way your body works is you have muscles and tendons which move your bones and your bones move the rest of you. Okay, So if you think of um, moving your mouse and hitting G and translating a bone as a tendon, the bone is the bone and then that moves the mesh which would be the body. Okay, It's a fairly direct uh, metaphor that I did a terrible job expla of explaining. Um, so we've got a bone. Now if we check back in with our cube mesh we can see that it's divided into four parts so um, you can probably safely make the assumption that I'm going to have four bones. So I'm going to select my bone uh, and I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode with the, with the bone. And if you notice down here, you can see that it is called armature bone. Um, when you create an armature, uh, first thing, I'm, I'm going to name the armature. I'm going to call it, uh, we'll call it column underscore rig. Actually, I'm going to do rig underscore column. That way, if I'm searching for it in the future, I can search for rig or go alphabetically, and it will be be there with all the rest of the rigs. So rig underscore column. I'm going to go tab into edit mode. And now we've got down here on the left, rig underscore column, and then colon bone, because that is the name of this current bone. Um, you can also name bones as you can anything else. So if I go to, go to the bone icon, I'm going to name this. Um, We'll just name it root, uh, and that'll be the base of this armature. OK. So in edit mode, uh, I'm going to select. There's, You can select either tip, or you can select the whole thing. Um, and you can scale, rotate, grab, just like you can anything else. But I'm going to select the tip, and I'm just going to hit G, Z, 1 to move it up to uni or one unit. Um, so that will line up perfectly with uh, this first section of our mesh. Okay. Now again, keeping this very simple, uh, I'm going to go back into edit mode, and I'm going to hit E to extrude, and I'm going to hit Z to lock it to the Z axis, and type in 2 uh, to extrude it up 2 units, and I'm going to do it 2 more times, just like that. Extrude, Z to lock it to the Z axis, and then type in 2 and hit enter. One last time, extrude, Z, to enter. Okay, So now I have four bones uh, as in my armature, in my, my column rig. Um, now I can also go back and name these all. So I'll call the second bone. Uh, I mean, this a column doesn't really have any way of accurately being descriptive. You know, if this was a person, you could call it forearm, upper arm, left, right, you know, 
normal descriptive things with this column, I can really just leave it at root 01, root 02, and root 03. Um, just because there's not really any more accurate way to do it at this point. So I've got my, my armature established. Um, now, if I go into pose mode, which is the mode you actually animate in, I can do that down here. I've got object mode, edit mode, and then pose mode. You can also toggle in and out of pose mode with control tab. And you'll know that you're in pose mode because the bones will be highlighted blue when you select them. Okay, so if I'm in pose mode now and I select this bone, I can start rotating it and everything seems to be working as I would expect. But the mesh doesn't rotate with it. So what we need to do is something called skinning, which is parenting the mesh to the rig. Okay. So there's a few different ways that this can be done. The simplest way um, for us at this point uh, in object mode, there we go. I'm going to select the mesh. I'm going to shift, right click, select the rig, hit control P, and here are my parenting options. Armature deform, and then I can do with empty groups, envelope weights, and automatic weights. Now these weights and groups refer to vertex groups. And the way that armatures work is each bone, the various vertices of the mesh get parented to a bone so that when the bone moves, those vertices move. Okay, so you can have a vertex be completely dependent on a bone, completely independent of a bone, or a range in between. So a, a vertex, say you're uh, an elbow, if you had a vertex on an elbow, that could be influenced by a bone on either side of the elbow. Okay, and I will, I will show a visual example of that uh, in a bit. But for now, we're going to do with automatic weights. Click that. Now I can go back to my armature and go into pose mode and start rotating around, and it is deforming uh, my mesh. Now, if I hit Z to go into solid view, I can't really see my armature anymore. So if I go to my armature properties up here, the little stick figure dude, and I click X-ray, now I will be able to see my rig through my mesh um, whenever I want and can then uh, animate accordingly. And you can see uh, as I start rotating this, the edge loops that I added and how they deform and how they help make a more clean uh, deformation. I do want to demonstrate another, um, well, a couple more things about this. So in pose mode, I've, I've rotated things around and just generally screwed around with my pose. Um, over here in the armature options, we've got a couple of different things. We've got Layers and protected layers, these are bone layers. These are not the same as your scene layers. Um, I'm not really going to deal with those. Just know that they're there. As you're using pre-made rigs, you will notice that different bones will be on different layers. And unfortunately, each rig kind of has its own standards. Um, so you'll just have to spend some time with yours and get familiar with it. Um, but I've got pose position. And I can also click and get back to my rest position. I can't. Um, edit anything in rest position, um, but I can go back to it whenever I want. If I want to clear my pose and get back to my rest position, get back to a starting point, double tap A to select everything, Alt G will clear my location, Alt S will clear my scale, and Alt R will clear my rotation. And now I'm back to my starting point. Okay, So I can scale this one up, whoop, scale this one up, and I can scale this one down, and I can rotate this top one. And maybe I want to move this one, uh, move the whole thing over here. Okay. And if I decide I don't like that, then Alt G to clear the location, Alt R to clear this rotation, and Alt S to clear the scale. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to cover before I move on. Yeah, yes, there is. So as you're adding these bones, um, if you're rigging your own simple character, Say you decide that you only want this column to bend one direction. Uh, if you go to your bone options, and I select this top bone, I can set transform locks. And anything that I select here, I will not be able to actually transform. So if I don't want to be able to scale it at all, or if I don't want to be able to scale it in the Z direction, I can click that. And now 
Uh, that didn't work at all. Hold on. Give me just a second. Go to my armature display axes. Ah, it's the Y direction. So armature display axes so I can check what direction I'm going. Yes, there we go. Now I can't scale in that direction. If I don't want to scale at all, then I can't accidentally do something to screw up my model. Um, and the same with rotation. So if I look at this and say, I'd like it to be able to bend this way, you know, kind of forward and back this way, um, but no other direction, then I would lock the Y and the Z, I believe. There we go. And now it will only rotate in that direction. Okay, no matter which direction I'm looking at my model, it will still only rotate in one direction. Um, so these can be very useful as you set up your rigs. Um, again, to make sure you're only getting the transformations that you want and none of the ones that you don't want. Okay, so let's uh, move on and go to layer one. And we got this little guy. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to select the camera and the light and I'm just going to delete them. We don't need them. Okay, so I've got this little dude. I modeled very, whoops, very quickly. Um, and I think this will be a very good model for us to practice, again, simple rigging. So, I've got my simple character. I'm going to hit 1 to go in front view. Shift C to make sure my cursor is selected. Uh, and then I'm going to hit Shift A, add armature single bone. Okay. Hit Z to go into wireframe. And I'm going to first name my armature. And I'm going to call it rig underscore um, character. It's not a great name, but it'll do for our purposes. Now, what I want to do is get this bone in the position, in its starting position. This is going to be my root bone. And most of the time, or a lot of the time on bipedal characters, the root bone is the hip bone. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to right click on the main section of the bone uh, to select it. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And I'm going to put the base of it uh, right at the base of the pelvis. Um, as you're doing this, a little bit of uh, anatomy knowledge certainly helps just to make things feel more natural. Um, now I'm going to take the, the, the tip and I'm going to move it down to, say, about here. And I'm going to name this bone, we will call it hips. Now, one thing that I want to do before I forget is over here on the toolbar, I've got under Armature Options, X-Axis Mirror. So this organic uh, model, like many, is symmetrical. And if you model it kind of in a standardized way, it'll be symmetrical across the X-Axis. So one of the reasons why we always model that way, well, maybe not the reason why, but they're, they're very directly related, um, is now we can use x-axis mirror so that when I'm adding these bones, creating the bones, positioning them, uh, it will automatically create the ones on the opposite side, very much like a mirror modifier. Um, another advantage as we get into the naming is if you use uh, one of two different naming conventions in Blender, it will automatically name the other side. So if I name um, a leg bone dot L, I can, once I duplicate the bones to the other side, it will automatically switch the names, well not automatically, I have to tell it to, but it will switch the names to dot R. Uh, and I'll go through that in a minute, but um, be aware of that. X-axis mirror is on, and uh, I'm going to continue uh, creating my armature. So, I've got the tip of this selected. I'm going to uh, hit E to extrude, Z to lock it to the Z axis, just keep it in the center. Uh, and I'm going to move it up to there, I think, maybe up a little bit more. 
and extrude one more time. Z, keep it in the center, and there we go. Uh, maybe touch more. Okay. So I've got that. Uh, I'm going to name the second bone. We will name, I don't know, torso. And the top bone we'll name chest. OK. Now I'm going to select the tip of my chest bone, hit extrude, and move it out to the side here about where the shoulder joint would be. And before I do anything else, you notice here on the left side my extrude options. I'm going to click forked, and that will create the bone on the opposite side. Uh, I'm now going to select the bone, and you can see it automatically named it chest underscore L. And if I select the other one, it named it chest underscore R. So you can already see Blender automatically naming things and keeping them organized. This is a wonderful thing. Um, makes our job a lot easier. However, I don't want it called chest. I want it called shoulder. So I'm going to make that change uh, right now. Now, out of curiosity, does it? did not automatically change the name. But if I go to armature, flip names, nope, that didn't do it yet either. I'll just rename this one then. Interesting. So shoulder underscore L. Then we will call this shoulder underscore R. And everything works. Good, I'm glad somebody's paying attention. Uh, now I'm going to uh, extrude the shoulder down to the elbow. Uh, I'm going to call this bone um, upper arm um, underscore L. Let's see if we can, with this selected armature flip names, will it work? Nope. Oh, I know why. OK. Because I'm flipping the wrong name. Armature flip name. There we go. Nope. That didn't work either. OK. I'll get back to you on that one. Wait. Upper arm. Underscore R. Okay, and then I'll extrude uh, this one down to the tip here. And if I hold down control, it'll just snap to that tip last vertex right there. You notice that there are no hands or feet on this character because I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. I didn't want to have to worry about setting up a slightly more complicated foot rig, or certainly I didn't want to deal with hands because of all the fingers. So I'll rename this one. Uh, forearm underscore L and the opposite one forearm underscore R. Okay. Uh, next, let's do the neck. So I'm going to select this top little joint right here. Uh, and from side view, I'm going to hit extrude and just go up to the base of the head. I'm going to call this neck. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck de deform. Okay, This character doesn't have a neck, so I don't need the neck bone to deform anything. I just want the neck bone to be there so that the head is actually connected to the body in some way. So the head doesn't you know, get completely lost on its own. Okay, So once I got that uh, set up, then I'm going to select the tip of the neck bone and extrude out to cover uh, my head and call that head. Okay, so we have our head, and we've got our neck, our shoulders, and our arms, and our torso. Now we need to do the legs. So I'm going to select, uh, select the root of the hips and hit extrude. I'll go down to about here. Um, now if you notice, that doesn't really line up with how this works. And for those of you who are familiar with anatomy and the hips, the hips join your femur uh, on the side, not in the center. So 
I'm going to select the bone, and I'm going to hit G and move it away. Uh, and move that down with the bone selected. Uh, I'm going to, first of all, name it. I'm going to name it uh, thigh underscore L. And I'm going to set the parent to the hips. And on the hips, I believe I need to See armature. Okay, so um, I want the the thigh bone to be connected to the root of um, this hip, my hip bone. So what I have to do is select the hip bone and armature switch direction. Okay, armature switch direction. So the um, you can see which way the bone is now pointing. And then I'm going to select my thigh and set the parent to the hips. Okay, so now I've got this dotted relationship line going to the bottom of the hip bone, which is what I want. So I've got my, my root bone and my thigh bone uh, kind of established. And then the last bone I need to do is extrude down uh, to the base there. And we will call this, take a guess, shin underscore L. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to come around to the side view and move that forward, G, X, no, not J, uh, G, Y, and move that forward so the joints uh, line up with the appropriate part of the body. I'm also going to look at my arm and make sure that those are more or less in the right spot and I think my elbow could stand to move back a touch um, just to make sure that they're more or less where the actual joints would be. Um, so now what I need to do is create the bones for the other side of the leg or the other leg. So I'm going to sl select my thigh and my shin which are appropriately named I'm going to hit Shift D, right click to keep them in the same spot, and then with my cursor centered, S, X, negative 1, and hit Enter. And now it's uh, in the appropriate spot on the other side of the body. Now with those selected, you notice that the, they're currently named Shin L001 and Thigh L001. I'm going to select both of them, and now this will work, I swear or I'm going to look like a fool, I'm going to select flip names, and there we go. Shin R and Thigh R. It actually worked. All right, so I have my armature made, uh, and I'm fairly happy with it. Although, actually, as I look at this, uh, I think the knees are maybe a little... I'm going to move the hips forward, GY... I still have x-axis mirror, so both of them moved forward at the same time. And I'm going to select the very bottoms here, and I'm going to move those forward as well. And it feels a little bit better. Okay. So I've got my armature. I've got it all made. Now I need to apply it to the mesh. So I'm in object mode. I'm going to select my mesh first. Hold down shift select my armature, control P, armature to form with automatic weights, uh, and now I can select my armature, hit control tab to go into pose mode, you can also do that via the menu down here, pose mode, and if I did this properly, hit R, and now it's rotating. So as you can see, you can select a bone, and move it around and uh, start whoops that's not right uh, I'm also going to on my armature uh, options enable x-ray so that I can see this in solid view there's a couple more things that I want to cover here um, the first one of those 
is bone roll. Yeah, so if, if for, for some reason something's not working, you need to remove the, uh, the skinning relationship. Um, if you go select your mesh and go to the modifiers, you'll notice that an armature modifier was applied. So you can hit X to remove that. And then also go to your uh, object data panel, which is this triangle. You'll see a bunch of vertex groups, which I'm going to get to in a second. But you'll also want to whoops, uh, select all of those and uh, remove those, or one at a time, just keep hitting the minus button until they're all gone. Uh, and now you can see nothing is uh, connected again. OK. Um, but I'm going to just redo that whole thing. Whoops. Control P, automatic weights. Okay. So I'm back uh, and rigged. So there's a couple things that I want to cover um, with this before we move on. And the first is bone roll. Now, if you notice, uh, this thigh is probably the best example. It isn't really lined up square with the direction that the thigh should be deforming. Um, so if I hit R and then X, it's kind of working. Uh, and I believe this one will be even more off. Oh, because it's going the global X. But uh, let's see if we do R, X, X. Actually, that's not working. That's not too bad. Um, but it will, <laughs> at times, you will run into problems with that. Um, but if you select, select the bone, and I believe it is... Is it control R? No, that is not it. Pose and transform. I swear I've done this before. Hold on. Because you need to be in, uh, in edit mode. So edit mode, armature, and bone roll. And then you can uh, recalculate the roll. To whichever direction you need to. Uh, you can also hit Control uh, R and actually just manually do it so that it is facing in the direction that you want it to go. Um, if it helps, you can turn on axes in your armature display and just make sure that it is pointing in the same direction. Uh, you can see this bottom one is pointing in the opposite direction, so I'm going to hit Control R, oops, sorry, Control N, X axis, and so now that, that's pointing in the same direction as the thigh. Um, yeah, so if you're getting unexpected um, directions in your deformations, that's uh, one thing to check. The other thing that I want to cover um, is more for your information because we're not going to get into it in this class, is weight painting. I mentioned before that the way that this works is that the uh, basically parenting the mesh to the armature is telling that the mesh that these vertices will be moved by this bone. Okay. Now there's a way that you can visualize this. And if you select your mesh and you look at your vertex groups over here, uh, with your mesh selected, if you go into weight paint mode, uh, which is control tab uh, again. Okay. Uh, now that we're hopefully done being interrupted. Um, we've got these vertex groups, and I'm in weight paint mode. And what this is, is this is visualizing the relationship between the vertices and the armature. So I've got these vertex groups, and you will notice that they are named the exact same as the bones. Um, so if I select my hip bone, you can see the vertices that are being affected by it. Now, red means that the vertices are being completely affected by that bone. Blue means they're not being affected at all. So if I select this bone and rotate it, you can see the red ones are moving completely with it, the blue ones aren't moving at all, and the ones with uh, a gradient in between are moving um, partially. Okay. Now, what you can do is you can edit this. Uh, and to do that, you select um, a vertex group. Let's see. Yeah, select a, a, a vertex group that you want to edit. 
and you can actually just start painting. You've got your brush options over here, your weight, which is, think of that as your influence. Um, so if I wanted to remove the top knee part of, uh, part of this from this bone group, I'd set my weight to zero, and I'd paint over it. And uh, now if I move this bone, that part of the leg doesn't move. Okay, so this is how you can kind of fine tune your weights and your skinning uh, to get the deformation that you that you desire. Uh, now, as you think about this, um, on a simple character, these automatic weights work really well. Uh, when you get more complex things and getting more complex bone structures and, and, and rig structures, these get a bit trickier to make sure everything is deforming the way that you want, especially when you start adding layers of clothing and armor and shields or whatever else um, you're adding to it. But I want you to be aware of it for now, so if you do need to clean it up, um, you know, some of you might be having this issue where uh, if you move this forearm, something over here happens, which would look like, uh, oh, I've got X-axis mirror still on, don't I? Seems like it. All right, I'm not sure what was going on there, but if I select the, the right forearm and start painting over here, uh, some of you might be experiencing this where you move one part of the body and a completely different part starts moving. So all you have to do is you can do this in weight paint mode. Um, just set your weight to zero and paint the areas that are moving that you don't want to move, paint them all blue. Uh, another way that you could do this is you could actually do this in edit mode. Uh, if you go to edit mode on your mesh, oh, that's probably why, because of the mirror modifier. Um, I'm going to apply this mirror modifier, actually. That might have something to do with it. Um, but you can actually, let's say I go to my chest. And let's say for some stupid reason I want the head uh, to be part of the chest bone. So I can select all the vertices in my head with my chest vertex group uh, selected and my weight set to one. I can uh, hit assign. Now if I go into uh, weight paint mode, select my chest, you can see that the head is all red. And as I move my chest bone, you can't really see it here because of the way that the parenting relationship is. That was a bad example. Uh, but you can see that it is now uh, in that vertex group. And likewise, if I click rem uh, remove, then uh, it is no longer in that vertex group. So just another way to deal with it. Um, again, we're not really going to be doing too much with it. I just wanted you to be aware of it if there were some subtle tweaks that you needed to make uh, in your deformations. So this is the simple way of, of doing a, a rig and skinning it and applying it to a mesh. Uh, there's a couple other options that you should be familiar with. Uh, the first is these display options. So right now the bones are displaying as octahedral. Okay, They're eight-sided. Uh, I can also have them display as sticks, as B bones, um, now, you see the B bones right now, they look like this. Uh, if you hit, I can't remember what it is, um, <coughs> scale envelope B bone. So control alt S, you can actually change the thickness of it. It doesn't affect the actual bone at all. Uh, it's just a display issue, so you can have things make a little bit more sense. Okay. Um, that's B bone. You've got bone envelope, uh, and this is another way of establishing influence, um, where whatever the the bones themselves cover will have 100% influence, uh, and then the outside uh, envelopes will have a graduated influence uh, over the the mesh. And then you've got wire. Um, so those are your display options. Another thing that you can do. Uh, is do uh, custom bone shapes and I don't remember off the top of my head how to do that so for that I apologize uh, however um, most pre-made rigs 
will have custom uh, shapes applied to them. Um, so that will kind of be a little bit more indicative of what the function of that bone is. Uh, you know, we have one bone in this rig, the neck bone. That is a non-deforming bone. Um, okay, it's not affecting any mesh. Uh, more advanced rigs will have many more than that as non-deformation bones. What you'll do is you'll have the bones that actually deform the rig, and then you'll have bones controlling those bones. So you'll have your control bones, your deformation bones, uh, and then you might even have a few other bones here and there. Um, so as you're working with rigs and you see all these different things going on, that kind of give you an idea of the reasoning and the method behind that. Um, okay, so here's there's your, your simple um, rigging, and you could certainly animate this uh, in whichever way you see fit. And if you'd like to, have at it, my gift to you. Um, but uh, for now, we're actually going to move into a file uh, with it's a little bit more ready for animation. Okay, so this is a a file in a pre-made rig. It's called uh, Bali Little. It's not um, maybe not spelled properly, but uh, that's what it's called. I got it from uh, Blend Swap right here by Tom Bombadil. Um, so it's a very simple rig for practicing animation. You notice there's the just a ball and legs. Okay, There's no arms, there's no torso or neck or anything like that. Uh, but it's a good way to kind of get used to uh, the animation process and getting familiar with a workflow. Okay, uh, so as you download these rigs, most of the time, they're not going to be in a clean starting point. Or maybe not most of the time, but a lot of the time. They're not going to be at, at a clean starting point. You'll have to do a little bit of work to get ready to do your own animations. Okay. Uh, and when I do this, the first thing that I, w that I like to do is just clean up the actual interface. Um, so I'm going to collapse a few things, move them around, and just in general, um, get it a little bit neater. I'm going to collapse that. And I'm actually just going to turn this into the timeline and move that down. Okay. Now, this also already has an animation applied to it. And it's a pretty simple one. This little mouse that runs under his feet. Okay. It's cute and it's fun, but it's not what we want. Um, we're just going to animate a walk cycle. Uh, but first, we have to get rid of this animation. And the way that we're going to do that is uh, we've got the dope sheet open right here. If you notice down here, it, we're not actually in the dope sheet. We're in the action editor. And we've got this head rote action right here. If I just hit, click that X, um, there is no longer any animation on this uh, Bali character. We still have the mouse, uh, which I'm just going to clear that action out and delete uh, that mouse because we don't really need it right now. And I'm actually going to expand that over here. And we're just about ready to start animating. Uh, I'm going to delete the camera as well. I don't want to worry about the camera right now. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one bone, double tap A to select all the bones, control G, whoops, no, alt G, alt R, and alt S to clear the scale, the location, and the rotation. So now we're at a good starting uh, rest pose for our animation. Um, also notice right now, if you go down to the timeline, you can see that the record button is on. So I'm going to turn that off just because I want to demonstrate a few things before I worry about setting keyframes for anything. All right, so let's take a look at this rig and figure out exactly how it works. We've got a uh, arm control, and what I'm assuming what the arm stands for since that this rig has no arms is armature. 
So we've got this control bone right here, which will move the entire thing around. Uh, we've got a torso control right here. We've got uh, a couple of stretch controllers. We've got a top one and a bottom one, so we can stretch from the top or the bottom. And then for the feet, we've got, if I go to wireframe, we've got one that controls the entire foot. We've got one that will control the, the heel and then one for the toe. And then we've got a couple of cubes out here, and these um, control, let's say, uh, control rotation leg. Um, basically, it's where the knee is pointing. So if I move this foot up so the knee is bent and select this little cube, where I move that decides where that knee is pointing. OK? So that is, that's the rig. It's a fairly simple rig. Um, but again, it's good for practice uh, and the animation that we're going to do. So I'm going to double tap A to select everything, and then Alt, G, R, and S to just clear everything out. Um, and let's first kind of talk through how we're going to do this animation. Uh, so we're going to do the animation in phases. And it's a, it's a simple walk cycle. Um, uh, we're going to do a walk cycle of just walking in place. I'm not going to worry about moving forward. Um, so we're going to do this in phases. We're going to do the keep poses first. Then we're going to do the breakdowns. Um, for those of you who don't know, we've got uh, the breakdowns are kind of describe how the character moves between the keep poses. Um, and then uh, after that, then we'll do um, start worrying about kind of refining and, and, and worrying about the motion. A um, couple things I want to do first. I'm going to bring up my user preferences, uh, command comma, and under editing, new F curve defaults. I'm going to set that to constant, and I'll make sure my handles are at auto clamped. Um, what this is going to do is allow me to just focus on the poses and not worry about the motion in between the frames. Okay, uh, I'm also going to we're going to do a a 16 frame cycle. Um, it's a it's a good number. It makes kind of laying out your poses fairly easy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my end frame to uh, I'm going to set it to 31, and that's so that. Uh, when we cycle, uh, it plays back smoothly. And then with my mouse hovering over the timeline, I'm going to hit the home button, and it's just going to uh, expand my timeline out to the right size. Um, and I think we can just be just about ready to uh, begin. All right, so as I go through this, I'm going to be referring to the Animator's Survival Kit by Richard Williams. Um, wow. 26 bucks for the paperback, that is very much worth it. Uh, full of amazingly useful insights and techniques. Um, if we scroll down, let's see, first pages. Kind of gives an overview of his history, uh, full of some really cool art. And then eventually it gets into the principles of animation. Um, which this preview will not show. But uh, I, I do strongly suggest if you have any serious interest in animation, this is an amazing resource. Um, if you don't have that, and most of you in this room don't, uh, if you just Google search walk cycle, go to images, uh, this is from that book, uh, as is this image and this image. Uh, and this is what uh, basically, what I'll be referring to as I as I go through the timing um, issues and the poses uh, is this specific image right here is a very useful image and covers the the key poses of a walk cycle. Now, obviously, you can vary these um, to get different looks, different feels. Um, the closer together your feet are when you walk, the more feminine it looks, the wider apart, the more masculine. Um, depending on how much rise and fall. 
um, can affect how heavy they feel. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different things that you can vary to get different uh, characteristics of your walk cycle. But we're just going to be dealing with the standard walk cycle for here because we're more worried about the workflow than the art of uh, animating. So uh, let's get animating. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 3 to go into side view and shift left to go back to frame one, which is not working. Um, I'll just go to frame one then. Okay, frame one. <coughs> and I'm going to first worry about a contact pose, just the first contact pose. Um, now I realize this one is going the opposite direction from what the way that I'm working. Uh, I can use my imagination and figure out what that would look like the other way. I hope you can as well. So, uh, let's get to it. I'm going to select this one. Oh, um, also, when I was talking about custom bone shapes, that's what these are. These are all customized bone shapes. And if you go to the last layer down here, you can actually see this is kind of a garbage layer where all those bone shapes are collected. Um, so if you ever stumble on that layer, that's what all that stuff is. Um, but, so, side view and start animating. Um, so I'm going to bring this foot forward a bit and rotate it up a little bit. And then I'm going to bring this foot back a little bit. And I'm going to bring oops, actually let's rotate yeah no we'll, if you rotate that let's rotate that a little bit let's get that kind of where we want it I'm going to select the torso control and I'm just going to bring the torso down a little bit just a touch. Maybe move this leg out a little bit more. Now if you notice too, the way this rig is set up is that it will just keep stretching forever. There's no hard limits to how far it can stretch. So just be careful that you're not going so far that it starts to look really unnatural. Actually, I think I'm going to keep a little bit of a bend in the knee. Okay. Um, and make sure, too, that you're not just animating from the side view. You want to make sure that you've got, you're, you're considering it from all angles. So I'm going to move that foot in a little bit and, oh, uh, also right now this rig is set up so that you can't rotate the feet out. You can only rotate them kind of. In, as your normal ankle movement. So I'm going to, uh, actually, can I rotate? No, I can't. Um, I'm going to select the foot, uh, which is apparently called stapa.l. Uh, I'm going to hit N. And up here under my transform, I've got all of these uh, rotation um, options and I'm going to uncheck all of the locks and also it appears I have a keyframe on frame 8 which I don't want so I'm going to switch to my dope sheet bring that up and get rid of all of that stuff go to frame 1 Kind of get that set up again a little bit better. We'll call create a new action. No, we don't need to do that. Let's we'll go back to the dope sheet and select all the keyframes and delete them. There we go. Okay. Now we're good. Back to frame one. And of 
course, that undid all of my already established poses. Um, but I'm going to select the foot bone and make sure that the locks are unchecked because I don't want to limit that rotation. And then real quick, I'm going to get back to the pose that I was in the middle of setting. So I'm going to move that forward, rotate it up a little bit, move the torso down just a little bit, move that forward, select the back foot, move that back, rotate it up. Rotate the toe. I should note real quick that these feet are set up right now with something called IK, uh, inverse kinematics. Uh, and what that means is that you move the foot and the rest of the leg will kind of move to compensate for that. Um, the option would be forward kinematics, which is you would rotate the upper thigh and then you'd rotate the uh, shin and then you'd rotate the foot, or the ankle, and then the foot. Um, they both have their uses. This rig, rig is currently set up um, as, as IK. Uh, the rigs that you're using will probably have a way to switch between both, um, and I will, if not cover that next week, um, point you in the direction of a resource that will um, in more depth than I probably would be able to provide in, in a class. Yeah, I'm just going to... Uh Get this, get this pose where I want it, and then I will um, explain things as they come up. And as you're doing this, you want to make sure that you cover um, all three axes of, of movement. Don't just worry about the side. Also think about uh, how it looks from the front, how it looks from the top, the, how the hips rotate forward, um, and how they tilt when, uh, when feet land, uh, all things like that. Okay, so something I want to, want to show you, um, I've got my first contact pose. Um, pretty well. It, it, it could very well need some tweaking later on, but for now I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, so the next thing that I want to do, once I select everything, hit I and location and rotation. Um, you can see down here I've got all my keyframes set. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is the opposite contact pose. Now what I could do is move my timeline up to uh, frame 13, I'm oh, sorry, not 13, 17, and start reposing it. But Blender has a wonderful tool that will make this um, much faster. And that is these three buttons down here uh, at the bottom of the 3D window. We've got a clipboard with an arrow pointing up and right, uh, a clipboard with an arrow pointing down and right, and a clipboard with an arrow pointing down and left. If you hover over these, uh, the tool tips will tell you what they do. Copies the current pose of the selected bones to the copy-paste buffer to the clipboard. The next one will paste the stored pose onto the current pose. And the last one 
a very cool one, paste the stored pose onto the cor current pose, but it's onto the opposite side, it's mirrored. And that's the one that I want. So I'm gonna go to frame one with my pose and I'm gonna click on the copy button. Shortcut is uh, control C. Now I'm gonna go to frame 17 and I'm going to click on the last button and it pasted my pose, uh, but mirrored it. And now I can hit I uh, and location and rotation. So now I've got two poses. Now because I earlier set my new F curve defaults to constant, uh, it's just jumping in between and that's good because now I'm just focused about uh, my key poses, not uh, not any of the motion in between them. Uh, and I want this to be a full walk cycle. So now I'm going to go to my last frame, which will be uh, 32. And I'm just going to paste it regularly because I still have the first frame in my buffer. Okay. I'm going to go to my last frame, which is frame 32. And uh, paste it. And then I'm going to I and set location and rotation uh, keyframes. So now I've got uh, three poses set, my, my kind of key poses uh, are set. And if I go to side view and real quick switch to my timeline, okay, my end is still at 31, so that's good. Go back to the dope sheet. Hit Alt A. Can't really see much happening uh, from the side view, but uh, we've got our poses. So starting to make some progress. Uh, the next phase that I'm going to do is uh, the breakdown phase, and that is the uh, passing position. So I'm going to go to frame 9 and start working on that. So one of the first things that I want to do is get the foot back flat on the ground. So instead of having to rotate it and, and hope I'm guessing that I'm getting close, I can just hit Alt-R to clear the rotation and now it's back flat again. And I'm going to put that one right about there. And I'm going to raise up the torso a little bit. Okay, and then let's rotate this, move it up. And let's clear the rotation on the toe. Point that back a little bit more. And now, as you can see right now, my knee is kind of pointing out pretty wide. So I'm going to select this cube down here and I'm going to move that in so that my knees aren't quite so askew.
Uh, one more thing that can be helpful as you're going through this animation is um, those of you familiar with something like Flash you know about onion skinning. So you can see frames before and after. So if I go to my armature properties and go down to Ghost, uh, if I adjust the range, you can start to see uh, all the different um, keyframes for whatever you have selected. Um, and actually, you, there's a checkbox that's selected only, which is probably the most useful so things don't get too cluttered. Um, but this will allow you to see where you've been and where you're going, uh, depending on your range. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to select everything, copy, and then jump up to, let's see, frame 25 and paste opposite. And set the keyframes. Now I need to do the down phase. Move that down a touch. I'm actually going to squash a little bit. Copy and paste opposite. And the last pose is the up pose. If you're watching this on YouTube at this point, now would be a good time to turn on some background music because I don't have a whole lot to say at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep getting the poses. I got this last one to do, and then, uh, then I can show you a couple more things.
copy and paste. Let's see. Paste opposite. Rotation and I forgot to paste that one. So okay. So I've got my key poses and I copied them to the opposite side. Now if I play through it, I've got a walk cycle. Uh, I'm going to turn off my uh, my ghost. And actually, if I just hide the armature, you can kind of see what's going on. And that doesn't look awful. Um, but that's just the beginning. That's that's the blocking. So um, when I say I want to see uh, you blocking out your animations, this is what I'm referring to. We're not worrying too much about overlapping action or getting the spacing exact. This is about getting your key poses and getting a, a good idea of what the timing is going to be and what the speed is going to be. So once we have this, let me show you the next. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, so I've got I've got a, a decent animation kind of blocked out. Um, I'm going to go into my dope sheet, and I'm just going to kind of look a little bit more closely at the animation and, and see if if things are really timed quite the way that I want. And I heard recommended um, today that the the down and the up, if you, the tendency is to want to put them right in the middle of your uh, contact pose and your passing pose, but if you actually move them um, one frame forward, uh, GX negative one, you might have better results. Oops, not, not scale. GX negative one. I'll do the same for this one and this, oops, that one, and this one. Actually, that one looks okay. Okay. Now, if you notice too, uh, with this guy, I did a little bit of squash and stretch animation. Um, it's just on the down, it's squished a little bit. It's normal on the passing and on the contacts, and then on the up, it's uh, expanded out a little bit just to give a little, a little bit more life. Um, but so at this at this phase, I'm looking at where everything hits. If I want one thing to be a little bit more delayed than the rest. Um, then I might do that at this time if I say want um, maybe I want this squash on the down to happen a little bit later then I might select just that one keyframe and move it uh, one frame over and the same thing on the up if I want that to happen just a little bit later uh, oops, I might change something Let's see, I want the Z location, that's the one. So G, X, 1. And on the up, I might want the that to hit a little bit later. G, X, 1. And I get a question. so I, I, uh, I moved my squash and stretch, uh, delayed it a little bit frame later and uh, kind of gives a weird weightless feeling but I kind of like what that does uh, to the animation um, and then from here what I is uh, is go into my graph editor and start looking more closely at at some of the motions um, 
as far as you know how how smoothly things things move if I look at let's see what is that is that rotation um, I don't know, I've got a few different options I can hide everything else just worry about this I can mute everything else Uh, which isn't being particularly useful for me at the moment, but it's an option. Um, and just kind of worry about getting the graph uh, smooth where I want it or delaying an action. I mean, you can obviously change values here. If, let's see, if I move this, you can kind of see exactly what it's affecting um, and just kind of get an idea from there. And if there's... Uh, let's see. Oops. Okay, so like this rotation here. Maybe that's happening. Go to side view. I think that that's happening a little bit too quick. I might want to delay that a little bit. So I'll just go in here. I'll select the handle. And I'm just going to move it out a little bit. And now it's going to happen a little bit later. Uh, and there's also, you can, if I remember where to do this, you can set a preview range. If you hit P and then click and drag, um, there's your preview range. So now if you hit Alt-A, it'll just repeat that section, uh, which at this point is actually kind of confusing because I keep going back and forth. Um, but if there is just one area that you want to preview, hit P, and then it'll only repeat that area. And that actually feels better to me uh, right there. Yep. Because there are some things that... So we've uh, had a request to cover importing assets into uh, existing files. Um, first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to save this guy because uh, I quite like that walk cycle. So, underscore walk, underscore class. Okay, save. All right, so let's say I wanted to um, have an environment uh, for this guy and just bring it into this scene. What I want to do, uh, I have two options. I have link and I have append. So what link will do is it will bring in an object, but it won't let you edit it. Okay, it, it basically brings in a reference of that object. And the power of that is if you're working on a team and you're all using the same assets and you're all animating different scenes, somebody can go to that original asset file and change the mesh and that will automatically update across everybody's files. Append will actually do kind of an import, what you might consider importing or um, a pl placing in, in uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, that type of thing. So I'm going to... Uh, I'll do append first, and I will navigate to uh, my Blender files and see if I can think of something that would be interesting uh, to bring in. How about a tent? And I'll do pup tent. And um, okay, so when you click on a blend file, you've got all these different options and all these different things that you can bring in. You can bring in actions, um, so kind of pre-made animations, uh, cameras, curves, images, and, and on down the list, materials. Um, I'm going to choose object. And you can tell this is an old file because I didn't name anything. And for that, I apologize. So instead, I'm going to go to a different file where I know things are named. Uh, let's go to Kara and let's go to, uh, let's go to this one, object. And I'm going to select all of these um, this is Kara from the CG cookie 2010 training series uh, for those who are wondering where this is from uh, this is my attempt at it not uh, not the official version I think that's everything link append from library 
and it will pop in to the scene. Uh, I don't appear to have eyes uh, currently. Um, <coughs> but that's everything, and then actually, I'm going to undo that real quick and. Oh, no, never mind, that's fine. Yeah, uh, it will it will pop in wherever you have the 3D cursor. So I put that over there. Let's redo that. Uh, append, select all of these. It's not really an easy way to do that. Now our assignment is supposed to be fit. How do you add frames? Okay, and I'm going to guess sphere is the eye. I don't actually remember. Blink a pen from library. Yeah, that was those were the eyes, and it actually didn't go at the three D cursor. That's where I thought it was going to go. Um, yes. So as as an appended object, uh, it's editable. Now currently, this is a pretty heavy mesh, so I'm going to turn on simplify and set my subdivisions way down to zero. And now I can kind of sort of move it around, maybe. Oh, because I'm still in pose mode. Uh, need to select. Need to select Kara. So I'd probably actually want to actually make a group out of this, but that's how you do it. Um, now, if I go. There we go. Okay. Now, if I want to just link something, file, link, and I'll go to a more reasonable uh, file. How about, um, hmm. No, we're not doing the snowflakes. Yes, I am recording this. So you get me mumbling and a look at my files. So lucky you. Uh, we'll do cycles render and we'll do object. And I'm just going to select everything and then deselect the camera, and the backdrop, and the lights. Gauges, windshield. No, nope, don't need that backdrop either. I don't need that. OK. Link append from library. So here is my plane. It is blue, uh, telling me that there's not really anything I can do with it. Um, I think so. We should be able to. Oops, I hid that. I didn't mean to hide it. Alt H. Okay. Hmm. Thought you could hide it and you can move it. I was pretty sure. I have not done a lot of linking, um, <laughs> as is becoming abundantly clear at this moment. Let's see if I select everything. You know, it might be useful in the, the file that you want to link to first put everything into a group. Um, Yeah, that's not quite working the way I had in mind. File, open, recent. Let's try this one more time. File, link. I know I have something simple here somewhere. Uh, what do I have that's simple? Yeah, my barrel is... Good idea. Where is my barrel? There's my barrel. Object. Actually, even simpler is that coffee cup. Coffee mug, finish, object, mug. There we go. There's a mug. Oops. Hmm. I could have sworn that you could at least move these around when they're linked. I guess not. 
You can always make it local. Selected objects, and then you can edit it. Um, and for your purposes, appending will probably be enough. <laughs>